first glance, a patchwork. But on closer inspection, it's not made of fabric, but of mobile phones. Dozens of keyboards from used phones sewn together and used as a canvas from which Munu Desire Kofi makes his works. His unusual medium makes this young Ivorian artist stand out. Why recycling? Because I didn't want to limit my work only to painting, to the medium of painting, to express myself just in that way. I wanted to bring something new. And I think the mobile phone is the tool that we're most attached to. Most of my work is about life, about people, so basically how people are in society. Kofi started scouring the streets and rubbish dumps to collect old phones after graduating from the Abidjan Art School. These days, he has a whole team on the lookout for him. The more they bring in, the more they'll get paid. And in a country that hardly sorts its waste, Kofi hopes to change attitudes by raising awareness about recycling. I think that just the act of collecting old phones and breathing new life into so-called waste, people say to themselves, aha, in fact, these things that have been thrown away that don't work anymore can be made into something new. They can contribute something. The collected keyboards are passed on to these seamstresses to be assembled. Kofi is the artistic brains behind the operation, thinking up new designs. One of his latest series, Life Here, acts as a portrait of the daily lives of the people of Abidjan. Some of his pieces sell for up to $1,500. After exhibitions in Morocco, Belgium and France, his latest show is right here at home. The 28-year-old has caught the attention of the art world. Doing something useful for humanity is always encouraging and making it pretty and raising awareness is even better. The canvas is an innovative one since he works on canvases that are rubbish. In fact, he breathes new life into these canvases and that brings even more to African contemporary art. Kofi's works will be on display until July. You could say he's got recycling down to a fine art. A truck laden with commercial crops is a rare sight here. It's a paradox of the Central African Republic, which the UN ranks as the second least developed country in the world. Nearly half the population is in a state of food emergency, despite millions of hectares of arable land. But things could be changing thanks to some private investors like Jean-Luc Tete, who was born in Central African Republic. For the past four years, in the fertile region of Labaye, this businessman has been betting on what he calls regenerative agriculture. Based on traditional techniques, it uses practically no fertilizer. He sees great agribusiness potential in a country that has faced decades of armed conflict and poor governance. We have available land, we have an exceptional climate, we have quite exceptional market conditions, and in fact we decided to create a champion of sustainable agriculture because it allows us to have an agriculture that conserves the soil and it allows us to have extremely low production costs which are the necessary conditions to be able to start agriculture here. Land use is negotiated with the village chiefs and 20% of profits are fed back into the community, some of which went into building a school. But few investors have taken the plunge in this initiative. The Palm Door Company, which is a producer of palm oil, is still the only major investor. We've been witnessing this for years through food aid which never develops the sector. On the contrary, it makes us lazier. It inculcates in our heads a mentality of the assisted, the people who always need to reach out for help. But when it's the private sector that takes charge, it's something else. It's a question of partnership between those who are going to invest and the producers, and everyone wins. This investment drive is also focusing on the manufacturing of processed products such as palm oil soaps to better protect the industry and its workers from fluctuations in the price of raw materials. But the cultivation of palm oil in the region has faced criticism from environmentalists. 
who have warned that it is a threat to biodiversity and a driver of deforestation. In a country where two-thirds of the food staple cassava is imported, developing this sector could help to stop people having to choose between eating and thriving. In the seas of Tunisia lies a hidden treasure, not a chest of gold coins, but a type of aquatic grass called Posidonia. Stretching for more than a million hectares, this is the largest seagrass bed in the Mediterranean. A quarter of the species in the Mediterranean are found in these meadows. The fishermen find these species of great economic value in the meadows. The meadows protect the beaches against erosion. They also improve the quality of the water, making it very clear, and therefore attract more tourists. Essential for both fishing and tourism, seagrass helps to sustain Tunisia's two main employers. Once washed onto the beach, it's often seen as a waste and removed, along with a lot of sand attached. This accelerates the erosion of the coastline. Yet according to experts, when the seagrass is left on the shore, it acts as a buffer against coastal degradation. The regression of the Tunisian coasts, which will directly affect the tourism sector, is linked to the existence and presence of these Posidonia banks, which protect our coasts. And if tomorrow we lose these banks, we risk serious economic problems, worse than those we are already seeing. With nearly half of Tunisian beaches under threat from rising sea levels, protecting Posidonia is more urgent than ever. Today, in Tunisia, we're going to create four marine and coastal protected areas, which are the islands of Galita, Zembra, Kuriat and Knais. For this fisherman from Montestir, who says he catches three times less fish than in the 1990s, the damage is already done, and he knows that there's shared responsibility. I am well aware that if the Posidonia disappears, it will affect the fish supply, and I would like to do something about it, because it is my livelihood, as well as that of my children and grandchildren. We haven't protected it, not just us fishermen, but the state as well. We have to fish to feed our children. As well as being a habitat for the fish, Posidonia is crucial in the fight against climate change, the seagrass produces oxygen and can absorb three times more carbon than a forest. Campaigners now want more widespread action to protect Tunisia's lungs of the Mediterranean for future generations.